Hi everyone. So this uh, tutorial is meant to supplement uh, the section in chapter one where we're doing a review of math. Uh, it consists of mostly arithmetic, maybe a little bit of algebra in terms of solving equations. But I also thought it would be important for us to sort of review the importance of looking at data in the form of graphs and how to interpret those graphs. Now, the reason why this is important, again, sort of goes back towards what we talked about in the first tutorial regarding the scientific method and the engineering design process when we were discussing the uh, importance of the independent variable and the dependent variable. And the reason why that's important is because, again, what we're trying to do by definition by running an experiment is to determine what is the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. And that relationship is often mathematic. In other words, do both numbers increase together? Do both numbers decrease together? Does one increase while the other increases? All of these are mathematical concepts. And so it's important to be able to look at a graph and detect those patterns, understand what exactly it is that's happening with the data, and then, in addition, part of what makes science so important uh, in day-to-day -day life is the ability to be able to make predictions. And in order to make predictions, then oftentimes if our data is quantitative, meaning that it has to do with numbers, then we should be able to come up with mathematical models. In other words, understanding using equations and equalities algebraic expressions, how it is that the data relates to each other. All right, so uh, one possible common pattern that we see when we look at data from experiments is sometimes we'll often see uh, data that is linear. Okay, so for example, here in this particular picture, we have data that is linear. And if you recall back to uh, algebra 1, middle school math, we know that linear equations have the form y equals mx plus b. Now as it turns out for this particular graph, if we take a look at what would be the y-intercept, the y-intercept occurs at 0, 0. So that means that the y-intercept in our general equation of a straight line also happens to be 0, which leaves us with an equation of y equals mx. Now, this equation is followed by all data that is what we call directly proportional. So this data is directly proportional because note that as the x values increase, the y values increase too. So basically here, for example, at this point, we have an x value of 2 but a y value of 40. If we increase the value of x, then if we trace up to our line, then when x equals 3, then y equals 60. So both x and y are increasing together. And when this happens, we can expect, again, a linear relationship between the data. Now, that's important because if we isolate the variables on one side, we get the equation y over x is equal to m. And what that means is any time that I have a linear data set, any two values of y and x should be able to give me the same number, a constant. All right, and we'll make use of this relationship doing an example problem later on. Um, however, it's not always true that data could be directly proportional. Sometimes data is what we call inversely proportional. Now, inverse proportionality is actually uh, pretty much the same as having the opposite of direct proportionality. Now, if you remember, for direct proportionality, based on the previous slide, if I divide those two variables by each other, I get a constant, right? But if I wanted to figure out the mathematical relationship between inversely proportional variables, then I have to do the mathematical opposite operation 
with the variables in order to get the constant. So when I'm dealing with variables that are inversely proportional, instead of dividing one by the other to get a constant, I would need to multiply those two variables by each other to get a constant. Now, if we actually go and rearrange this equation so that y is isolated, I get y is equal to m times 1 over x, where m once again is our constant. Sorry about that. Where m is our constant. And this graph of 1 over x is not a straight line. It's actually a relationship that we, in math, call a hyperbola. So once again, if I'm talking about inversely proportional variables, then what's going to happen is as one variable gets larger, the other variable gets smaller. So for example, if I take a look here, right, when x is equal to 1, right, if I trace over onto our curve, then y is also 1. However, if I take a look at x equal to 2, if you'll notice, then what that does is that creates a y value that is 1 half. Okay, so as my x values are getting bigger, my y values are getting smaller, and that relationship is mathematically described by, again, this relationship right here, where y is equal to some constant times 1 over x. Now, we can use these equations to do calculations to make mathematical predictions about data sets. So for example, uh, suppose that I have data that is directly proportional, okay? And I'm able to figure out that when y equals 24, x is 4 for this set of directly proportional data. Suppose that I want to know what y is when x is equal to 3. Well, if these are directly proportional data, that means that this equation right here must apply. Meaning, and I'll bring this over back to the example problem, if I have one set of x and y values, divide one by the other, that's going to give me a constant. If I have a second set of x and y values for this data set, then that should also give me the same constant back again. And according to the transitive property of math, if one constant is equal to two other expressions, then those expressions must be equal to each other. So that means y1 over x1 has to equal y2 over x2, where our first x and y values are what we'll call y1 and x1, and our second set we'll call y2 and x2. Now it's all just a matter of substituting in. So y1 is 24, x1 is 4. Uh, y2 is what I'm trying to find, and x2 is 3. So to solve this, basically I would have to cross multiply through the equal sign and that would give me 4 times y2 is equal to 72. If I divide this out, then y2 should be 18. So that means that when x is 3, then y should be 18. Now notice if we substitute this in to our direct proportionality relationship, what this is telling me is when y is 24 and x is 4, all right, 24 divided by 4 is 6. That should be equal to the y2 that we just found, which is 18, divided by 3, and 18 divided by 3 is indeed 6. So this check that we just did tells us that we did the mathematics correctly. And we are able to see that based on this direct proportionality that the value of 
y when x is 3 should be 18. But what if I have inversely proportional data? All right. Well, we know from our discussion earlier that basically what I should get is if I multiply the variables together, I should get a constant for inversely proportional data. So that means values of x multiplied by y should give me a constant. And if I have one set of x, y values and multiply them together, I'll get this constant. And if I have a second set of x, y values, I should also get this constant. So here, all that's left is once again assuming that our first set of x and y are x1 and y1, our second set are x2 and y2. If we just plug in, we get x1, which is 3, times y1, which is 8. I'm going to multiply that together and set that equal to x2, which is 4, times y2, which is what I'm looking for. Again, this is the unknown. So if I go ahead and do the math, this would be 24 is equal to 4 times y2. That means y2 is equal to 6. So if we go ahead and check our math by plugging into this expression, we should see that, OK, if I multiply 3 times 8, that gives me 24. All right, if I multiply 4 times 6, that also gives me 24, so our math checks out. But once again, this relationship of multiplying the variables together is correct for this set of data because we know that that set of data is inversely proportional. So it's important for us to understand all right, how to treat mathematical data this way when we're actually reading from graphs, when we're actually looking at data that we've gathered in our experiments. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go and have an assignment where you do more of this type of work, where you're going to be given a data set, you'll be able to figure out or you'll otherwise be told that the data set is inversely or directly proportional, and then you'll have to choose the appropriate equation, either this one in green on this slide, or this one in purple on this slide to actually figure out which uh, is the proper equation to go and solve for an unknown based on whether a data set is directly proportional or inversely proportional. So again, if there are any questions about this tutorial, by all means, let me know at the beginning of class. Again, I'll be walking around the classroom, you know, offering help and assistance. And if you need help, by all means, let me know and I'll see you guys tomorrow.